gosh, you know, Mark, we could talk all day. <laughs> we could. Hey, hey, so welcome to Power Living with Kimberly Langford as a nurse coach, Reiki master and entrepreneur. I have built my life and work around helping and empowering others to live their best, healthiest, and most, most authentically happy and powerful life. Uh, I share and visit with experts on all aspects of wellness, uh, physical, emotional, financial, career, business, health, relationships, environmental, and more. If you want to step into your best self, listen in every Saturday morning as we share new and old ideas to help set you up for the coming week as a fresh start for a better, better you. And I am super excited to uh, visit again, once again, with uh, a fa one of my favorite Mavics, Mark Testa out of Colorado. And he's a phenomenal chiropractor who's doing something that I have, I, we were just talking, Mark, I have still, I haven't found anybody in our space who's doing anything quite like what you do. But gosh, if, if you can, maybe we just start off with, share with us a little bit about you and what the heck is Regenix? All right, cool. Thanks, Kimberly. It's great to be here. And uh, likewise, Maverick, I love nurses because they um, touch so many people and parts of their lives and you cover it in this, uh, in this podcast. So this is very cool to talk to you again. Uh, I'll take it later. <laughs> so I'm a chiropractor and an acupuncturist, 30 years of experience, largely what I say is bringing up the rear of musculoskeletal in healthcare. I work the majority of my career either in the largest primary care group in the country, uh, in, the, in the state of Colorado, the physiatry group, one of the largest in the state, um, the largest work comp provider in the country, and in a hospital system. So I have literally worked side by side with pain management doctors, orthopedic surgeons, primary care. I've gotten to see a lot of things most chiropractors never get a chance to see and get my hands on people who would have never had access to chiropractic. That's really what I'm most proud of is bringing my services into places where you never have really seen chiropractors, right? When I got out of school in 1990, I was called a quack and had no idea. I remember, I remember it was on the fringe when I was in nursing school. You just, yes. didn't, you just didn't go see a chiropractor. Snake oil. Snake oil. And yeah. I had no idea because we grew up going to chiropractors and osteopaths for manipulation. I really had no idea we were considered quacks. So I spent the majority of my career with my hands on people. And in the last 10 years, I've, been, I've had the privilege of working with Regenex and founder Dr. Chris Centeno. Regenex is an uh, orthopedic surgery alternative where we use patients own bone marrow concentrate as a source of stem cells and their blood platelets to create platelet-rich plasma. And we concentrate these cells and place them with a needle. So we're non-surgical. We're using ultrasound and fluoroscopy, visual imaging to put those cells into damaged tissue. And what I love the most about that is it aligns with my values of non-surgical. Because all those years of working in the medical field, I saw everyone's failures, joint replacement mm -hmm. failures, spine failures, injection failures, bad side effects, opioid overdoses, opioid deaths. And um, I just, it, it just needs to change. And so I get this opportunity to help Regenex make its way into both direct to consumer and the employer based space for uh, employers to add as a health benefit. Well, you know, stem cells are kind of controversial. Some people still, when you mention stem cells, they think, oh my gosh, you're harvesting dead baby, you know, stem cells. And that's not, that's kind of, ooh, you know, uh, voodoo. Tell us, uh, I think stem cells are freaking awesome, but tell us a little bit about what is it that makes the stem cells so, so unique? And so, you know how, because these these don't these come from your own tissue. So where I'm coming from, Dr. Mark, is there are a lot of products out there that say they you can skincare creams that have stem cells, and people think, right. oh, there's blood in there or whatever. So just share a little bit about you know what's a stem a stem cell isn't a stem cell isn't a stem cell. Right. So we're not using, and I don't, I don't know of anybody doing embryonic research with aborted fetal tissue or anything like that. I mean, that may be going on somewhere. I don't, I don't know everything, but 
that's nothing that we do and nothing that's really available in the United States. We are using your own or what's called autologous, the patient's bone marrow concentrate, which has mesenchymal stem cells among other things, among those nucleated cells in the bone marrow. And those cells we think can't, I think, I think there's, there's two camps on the thinking process about how these work. They either turn into ligament, cartilage, bone, tendon, right? And there's about 50% of the literature says they probably do do that in the environment that they sense. The other half of the research says that these cells call in other cells to stimulate tissue healing. They call in other fibroblasts or cytokines or other chemicals to stimulate the healing process and, and create an inflammatory reaction and, and increase blood flow and develop new blood vessels. So mesenchymal stem cells that we harvest out of the patient's bone marrow are what can turn into that. We use them 100% only for orthopedic conditions. Like I said, so joint, ligament, cartilage, bone, tendon, discs in the spine, so et cetera. I, I take an undifferentiated stem cell. That's like a, that's a cell that hasn't decided what it's going to be when it grows up yet, right? So if I put that near tissue, near my knee tissue, it's going to grow new knee tissue. Because if I put it near ear tissue, it's going to grow new ear tissue. That's right, exactly. And you're saying that it also, some, some, some uh, camps say that it helps to increase the circulatory um, support for that process. Is that right? Improve circulation and then, but calling in those other cells. So that while these cells may actually differentiate, the signaling. as you're saying, yes, cell signalers, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a little bit of both uh, to be true in those camps, actually, you know, and I think we're still trying to figure all that out. We know clinically, though, that it works, meaning we can see a torn ACL completely be repaired or a torn rotator cuff completely be reconnected um, if it's not, you know, pulled apart real far. So something's happening clinically that's causing the tissue to regrow in some people. I tell you, I just, I've always operated for, I love good surgeons, love that we're able to do things with a knife that can be so healing and restorative. However, you think about it, if it's your body, right? The only minor procedure is a procedure that's happening to somebody else, right? So, <laughs> right. But once you cut, you can't uncut. And so I love the fact, and what you're doing then is you're taking this therapy, there's some huge cost savings involved with not cutting. Uh, and of course, some people, like you mentioned when we were talking earlier, some people, they're not a candidate for uh, either surgery or a stem cell procedure. Can you tell, how does, how does somebody who's not medical, how do they figure all that out? Where do they go to find um, reputable and qualified uh, information and providers? Yeah, that's a great question because there is a lot of goofy information out there. Um, and it's easy to get go down the wrong rabbit hole. But first off, I think if you're if you are considered if if you're considering surgery, I really think everyone should get a second opinion. We know we work with surgical centers of excellence. Those are places where the surgeon is paid a salary. They're well paid, but they're not paid to do surgery on people. Right. They're that's not what their incentive is. And so they give an unbiased diagnosis. And when we work with centers of excellence, anywhere from 25 to 30% of people are deemed not surgical candidates. They don't need surgery. So that tells me in my community, 25 to 30% of the people getting surgery don't actually need it. And they're undergoing the knife, the anesthesia, the rehab, the risk, really. So I think a second opinion by a reputable surgeon. And I tell you, a couple places people I ask for reputable surgeon are nurses. They know a lot of times who they are. Um, and then if you can find, you know, reviews and corroborate reviews, because they're not always, some of them are gamed a little bit, for lack of a better yes, word. Yes, that's really awful. I've, I've seen some paid reviews. That's not really a review. That's a bribe. Right. And, and that's a false, yeah, exactly. So if you can corroborate different reviews, if you can um, uh, find a center of excellence, you know, people complain a lot about 
you know, Kaiser for lack, you know, I mean, that's just been out there. This is not new to anybody, but I have found in all my years in practicing those patients who end up having surgery with Kaiser, because those doctors are paid a salary, have great outcomes and not all of them end up in surgery. So I see it happening. So I would say, look there first, ask a nurse, look at reviews, look for centers of excellence. They're out there. Um, if you're willing to travel, there are surgeons uh, like in Las Vegas or in Tulsa, right? Surgery Center of Oklahoma that are, you just pay one fee and you get a good surgeon who's going to help you make a decision if you're a good uh, candidate. If you're looking for stem cell, you know, information, that's just all over the place. And I'm biased. I'm going to tell you, go to the Regenex website. Everything that we publish there, everything that we blog about has references. And so we're not just giving our opinion. Um, there is some opinion there because Dr. Centeno, our founder, is a thought leader in this space. So he will give a strong opinion. But he backs it up with references. And, I, and you know, if you're going to decide, am I a stem cell uh, candidate, you know, we give a candidacy grading, good, fair, or poor, because not everyone is a stem cell candidate either. And, right. you know, we know for sure men over 55 with hip osteoarthritis, not a good candidate. We're probably going to say you're going to have to have surgery. So I feel confident recommending our website. You may be able to go to some universities, but their their point of view is a little bit different than our point of view. Our point of view is to keep people out of surgery. Universities also employ surgeons and have surgery centers and hospitals. And so there's a little bit of a mixed message that may be coming We do out. like interesting cases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really cool to watch a good surgeon at work. <laughs> yes. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So I hope that helps steer some, some, you know, making sure you find the right doctor for your condition. You know, it's interesting, like you and I were talking before, um, it's interesting seeing how, you know, you talked a little bit earlier about uh, the opioid crisis and how, how have we gotten to this space? And I think sometimes... Um, Sometimes our milieu, sometimes our paradigm is let's just do a quick fix and get people down the road, right? And we don't realize that there's going to be a price tag for that. You, you, can't, you can't put a Band-Aid, just slap a Band-Aid on, you know, something that needs stitches and, and not have to go back and, and fix it. And we were talking earlier how, you know, especially for backs, and of course we both chuckle, but I, in all my years, I've never seen a back surgery come out just right. But what I do see uh, that you've seen as well, you have somebody goes into the physician because they have back pain. And the first thing to do is they put them on if muscle relaxant and a pain pill and send them out the door. We're not, uh, we're not quick with massage therapy. We're not quick with PT. Um, we're not quick with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. We're not quick with chiropractor uh, visits, although those are changing, yeah. uh, which is nice that you're not part of the quackery anymore. Right. Yeah. But, but that's how I think we've gotten to that place. Just give them a quick fix and get them out the door versus there's sometimes that takes a while teaching somebody how to, how to take care of your back, how to take care of your knee, how to take care of your shoulder versus just jump into the quickest thing. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest things missing in healthcare is we don't come with an owner's manual and we don't really spend the time to teach people how to be healthy and take care of their problems. And, you know, I always used to tell my patients, I don't want to sound like the prophet of doom, but what I'm going to do for you is going to help for a while and it will stop probably being helpful. What you need to do is learn how to manage this yourself. What works for you? What doesn't? How do you do this? I'll give you some recommendations, you know. Um, but your point also is well taken that we're not quick to add these things. I can't tell you when I was either in primary care or physiatry, pain management, how many people said, why didn't they send me to you first? Because they'd had injections. They maybe have had a surgery. They had steroid shots. And then they'd get to me. And, and that was my value prop to start out with. Just give me your failures. Right. And there were plenty of them. Um, and, mm -hmm. and so many people ended up getting better 
after they had failed all that expensive and invasive stuff. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I think everybody has their own paradigm. And um, when you go to a physician, they're going to do their tools. And when you go to a chiropractor, you're going to do your our tools. So uh, hopefully we can build more collaboration in the next, um, I still got yeah. some time left. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. And no, no shortage of work for in education, right? When we yeah. talk about, uh, you and I were talking earlier about how, you know, traditional wellness as we think of wellness in terms of like a benefit doesn't work. Um, which that, because I tell you, I'm a vehement believer in wellness, but my, the wellness I'm talking about doesn't come in an email. It doesn't come in a letter or a text, right? You can't, you can't change behavior with a, a letter. It, an email is not necessarily inspirational, right? right? Unless you already have a relationship built, right? So as we encourage people to adopt, um, I mean, you pay, you pay for everything. If I want wellness, I'm either going to pay for it up front. I'm going to learn how to eat right. And, and I'm going to learn how to make time for exercise. I'm going to learn how to shut off my, I'm going to learn how to get some sleep. Maybe I'm going to go get a massage, see a chiropractor, those things that we do to stay well, or you're going to pay for it here on the back end, right? It's that law yeah. of entropy. And um, while, you know, I love that we have these rich programs in place to help with containing costs and providing you know, services and things that we need. I love the fact that there are folks out there like you and, and others. So there's a lot of us in the space talking about uh, wellness, which in my mind is always a better investment. Yeah, I, I agree with you there because you do pay for it somewhere. As my ninth grade English teacher, Mr. Rico used to say, there ain't no lot. Either you're maintaining your health or it's just getting worse, right? There is no coasting with our health and, um, and it takes effort. And, you know, sadly, people live on food islands and or they don't know how to prepare foods or they don't know how to shop. And again, this comes back to the educational process. You know, the big food industry has sort of set things up against us, truthfully, you know, with subsidized foods, whether it's corn, wheat, soy, which make up about 50% of what people eat, high fructose corn syrup, um, all those things that are so easy to ingest. And as you know, in, in what you're doing, you know, lead to obesity and diabetes and kidney disease. And we spend so much time trying to figure out how to control costs and begging and pleading and hoping that the government will give us a solution. That's all after the fact. No one says, here are a few very basic things that you can do to not need this. Because yeah. the quality of your life, it really starts to diminish after about 50, where one in four people have a, one chronic disease and one in six have two. After 50. You know, you know, although I tell you, I love that, that what if or how does, right? Those, those power questions. Because I, mean, I know you know them too. People who are in their 50s getting in the best shapes of their lives. I love sharing, you know, Ernestine Shepard, right? No, does not. Really oh, know. dude. Okay, you got to go Google Ernestine Shepard. She will blow your freaking mind. This chick, she's like 80 something years old. And she, she could take you. She looks like she might be maybe 40. Uh, she's so she's a competitive bodybuilder still. She, I mean, folks who take care of their bodies, they reap a benefit. I remember one of the gals I went to go see one time, she was 80 something year old lady. She had fallen and fractured her hip. And I was in a home health nurse back then. And I went out to go see her thinking, oh, you know, 80, 90 year old ladies, they don't stay home with fractured hips. I'm going to end up calling 911. I got to find somebody to pick up my kid because this is going to be, <laughs> it's not going to be a good visit. It's going to be right. really hard. I walked in there, Mark, she could have taken me. She looked amazing. She was up and around. And yeah, she had some pain, but she was dressing herself, doing cool things like eating and dress. She was independent. She still drove. She still but she had lived her life in such a way to support that longevity, right? She was a yoga mama. And I just, that's when I said, cause back then I was too busy 
like so many, and I don't, that's why I think, you know, it's not just education. I think a lot of folks, we know what we need to do, but how? You don't understand. I leave the door, I leave my house at 7.30 in the morning, I grab a bagel and a cup of coffee and I hoof it all day. And of course, then I slump at 10 o'clock. So there's a vending machine and then they got, you know, pizza or whatever in the break room or there's a business lunch and I get home at seven o'clock at night. Now you want me to be Donna Reed, <laughs> right? And I think just like this woman, right. she had done yoga. Her, she told me the summer before she had quit doing inverted poses on her paddleboard. That's when I said, I got to, I got all the old people I've taken care of, old people that they can do, they're independent, they, they know their kids' grand names, <laughs> their grandkids' names, they can find the keys to the car and do all that kind of stuff. They're active. A lot of them do things like yoga or Pilates, they walk. And um, it, I mean, it's huge. You pay for it here or, you know, you, you pay for it here, but we, we know those things. People know they need to eat right. They know they need to get enough sleep. They know they need to manage their, it's not, I don't know that it's a matter of education as far as much as it is how. Yeah. I, you don't understand. I'm too busy. And, and usually when you talk to a Mark, I sit down when I talk to like with my coaching practice, I talk to people and they say things to me like my life is one big to-do list. I do nothing significant. They feel drained because they don't do anything that juices them up. They're not happy. They're not fulfilled. Uh, but that's a different topic, I suppose. Yeah, I agree with you there. It is, not, it is more than just education. There are all those other factors in our lives that, you know, make it difficult to implement things that we know we could or should be doing. So, man, um, uh, yeah, that is a whole other topic that takes some time to weed through. We could talk about that all afternoon. Well, yeah. but then too, when you go see some, if, if, if you do the, I mean, most doctors that I know, we have a physician shortage. They see, I know a lot of docs that I work with, they're seeing 30 patients in an eight hour day yeah. and they're rounding in a hospital. How are they going to find 30 minutes, 40 minutes to carve out and do education? Right. They're not. And that's where I think health coaching health coaches. There are a lot of people being trained in coaching and health coaching could be the bench for the physicians, right? Like if you get a diagnosis and you're, you, you know, you said it, you, we need a relationship. If you get a diagnosis of diabetes or hypertension, a few visits with a health coach could make a big, big difference. Somebody Absolutely. who's got an ear and- Or a dietitian. You get dietitian. something with a registered dietitian, it totally turns their game around. Yeah. So um, I, th I, you know, hopefully these are things we can see start to be implemented as we get, you know, along. Um, you know, the other things too, I, and I don't know what the first domino is. For me, it's been meditation. Um, I've been meditating over 30 years now. And I, I, people always like, I can't stop my mind from thinking and I don't have time. And again, um, you know, I don't know how to get it distraction right and you our brain thinks that's what i always tell people it's like asking your heart to not beat it's just what the brain does so never you ever shuts that. off no. and, yet, and yet it's programmable it is it's a plastic. super computer it's very i think it's one of the best things that we can work on shifting our uh, shifting our mindset i think i think when a lot of people think about meditation they think about okay i gotta go buy a yoga mat <laughs> And I gotta buy, I gotta have my, my yoga pants and I have to carve out the space, right? And they're making it more complicated than it is. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you employ um, a meditative kind of practice into a busy day? I, it's first thing, man. I have one hour of time that is myself where I do Egoscu exercises because I got a bad neck and I can stay out of pain by doing these exercises. I do a breathing practice in the morning. I journal every single day and it's the first domino. It's the first thing. I don't turn on the lights. I don't pick up um, uh, my phone. I mean, it, tons of insights in this journal that need to come out. And whether it's a bitch session or a review or a gratitude, it's the first thing I do in the morning. Otherwise, it just doesn't get done. And, and I also exercise. Right. I might do 20 minutes of high intensity workout, mm -hmm. but it is the first thing. And do I always want to get up and do that at 5.30? No. Did I today? No. 
but I did. And I'll tell you the, the benefits. I saw, v, I saw Venus behind me. I saw Mars and the moon right there. And I'm like, this is awesome. Because I, I went outside, I saw it shining. Oh, that's glorious. Oh, my goodness. So well, that's I, how I knock it down or it doesn't get done. You know, you're really successful people. When you hang out with really successful people, they do. Successful people don't start the day late and, and behind. They're not, they're not hamsters on a wheel. They're creative and it's really hard. You're right. Because our brain never does shut off. So how, how do you train that? And I'm, I'm with you. I'm a 5 a.m., 5.30 kind of check. First thing I do, even, even if I'm laying in bed, uh, doing some stretches and some exercises and spending that time when we're in that alpha state, right? It's pregnant right. with, so that's such a rich time of the day. Why waste it? And then yeah. of course the exercise really great for your, your, your brain, right? We have that BDNF that gets secreted, all those good hormones. It really helps yeah. if you're looking to increase your performance and get more done in less time, have increased focus, Man, you're talking, no wonder I like you so much. <laughs> yeah, that's just worked for me and I'm, gr I'm grateful for it because I know it doesn't come easy for people. Um, you know, and I fast a lot. I mentioned that to you before. I fasted today like 16 hours. So um, I won't eat until like 11 or 12. So, and, and for me, that works. That keeps my brain clear. I don't have any crashes. I do drink coffee. Um, but that's just the groove I have found because I want, you know, I... I'm relentless in wanting things, not monetary things, but contentment in my life. And it requires doing certain things. It requires some effort. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. how do people, if people want to know more about you or if they're curious about Regenex, uh, how would they, how do they find you? Uh, Regenex is at Regenex.com, R-E-G-E-N-E-X-X. Um, and so you could start there. Uh, I'm really, you know, I've taken myself off Facebook in like March, I think was my last post and I love it. So I'm not there. I'm on Twitter at, at, at doc testa, D O C T E S T A or on LinkedIn. Those okay. are my two places, um, that, that people can find me. Yeah. Right on. All right. Or you can ask me and I'll tell you where to find Mark. You're a great connector, and I appreciate that because we're on a similar mission here to make healthcare better and you know make healthcare accessible and e health easier for people. Well, you know, there's a lot of us in that. I know we were talking about that a little bit before. There's a lot of us in the space. I was talking with somebody else, and we're uh, earlier today, and we're talking about, you know, I I really believe that this time that we have, while well, it's difficult. And just like anything, I really think our biggest opportunities, our greatest blessings, whether it's in your personal life or your business life, they usually come after you weather a storm, right? You got to walk through some poop, <laughs> so to speak, to get to this place. I mean, yeah. truly meaningful things that really uh, are important and have a lot of value, they're not cheap. And so... I really think that this time that, that we are in, and especially in this industry and in our healthcare uh, space, it's a time where, you know, your people who are really out to do the right things for the right reasons, they really want to provide authentic uh, value that's rich with integrity and purpose. I think those are the companies that are going to thrive in 20 years from now where those companies are still going to be here because we're all hungry for that. I right. think, I think as a population, not just, not just as vendors and brokers and providers, right? But as just people, I think we're, we're sick and tired of just eating frosting. We want a really good cake, right? And yeah. so, and those players who are out to make a dime and that if, you know, if all they're looking for is a profit, they're, that's what they're going to find and there'll be a flash in the pan. They're not going to be here 10 years from now because we can't afford them. You know, it's like, do you want a zirconia? Or do you want the real thing? I want the real thing, baby. <laughs> so. Yeah, real thing. I agree with you. Relationships, not transactions. Yeah, yeah. Give me something real value. And, and I think there's a lot of us in this space who, who we do want to provide real value. We do really want to make a difference in our industry. And I 
the, frankly, I, I absolutely love what you're doing. The fact that people have an option where before maybe they didn't. They had a torn ACL, they needed a rotator cuff. Those are pretty common injuries. Yeah. Back, uh, yeah. knees, hips. Uh, before you didn't, you just hung out there as long as you could. You delayed surgery as long as you could and then you went under the knife. And, and now folks have an option. What's the worst that can happen if they, if they, you know, if they're a candidate for a stem cell procedure, like you mentioned earlier, right? Yeah, maybe if it doesn't work, they're still going to go under the knife. But the saving, you know, before we go, actually, we should mention that about the kind of savings that you're able to garner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the savings uh, for an employer who's paying for the benefits for employees can be up to 70%, depending on what surgery we can replace. We have a case study, and I'll just share a couple numbers. Um, knee replacement, uh, right? Those are very common. Knees, shoulders, and spine are about 80% of what we do, at least on our cash side. And so knee replacements, there's probably close to a million of those a year done in the United States. They can run anywhere from, you know, $30,000 to 55, 60, and depends what hospital you go to. I mean, it really can, and that will impact you as the employee. You're going to have a percentage of that to pay as well. So, um, so one employer we worked with last year share, shared their benefit costs with us. Their knee replacement all in costs were $26,000. We intervened on numerous knee replacement candidates for under 10. So using their own stem cells. Uh, this employer has been with us two years now. I just was emailing with him today. They can't say enough good things. Their employees get back to work in four to seven days. They've saved a fortune. The last time we ran a cost savings, it was about 75% versus the same surgeries that they would have had. The laminectomy case that we their cost and they paid um, us under $5,000 to intervene on that patient. So the cost savings can be huge, but even more so when I've seen so, so many surgical failures, I mean, your life <laughs> and the quality of your life, it's even bigger when you can avoid a surgery that doesn't work. I saw a post, I think, well, I can't remember if it was on your page or maybe it was, um, maybe it was somebody else's page where it had the guy who had a rotator cuff repair and he was benching. I don't know. Those yeah. are really big weights. And I'm thinking, yeah. I know lots of people have rotator cuffs and they can't, they can't do this anymore. They right. can't, you're talking about just putting on a shirt. It's difficult. Yeah. Um, after a surgery. So I, that was very exciting to me. Yeah, that was a great, uh, great view. I, I had a torn labrum here seven years ago and definitely couldn't do this. And I have full range of motion and no pain. So same thing, you know, being a chiropractor is hard on your body. I've had plenty of these procedures and take zero drugs at my age. So I'm grateful that it's keeping me well kept together. That's awesome. And your family appreciates that. <laughs> yes, they do. Right. Exactly. All right. Well, gosh, thank you so much for sharing time, Mark. I always enjoy talking with you. And so Regenix.com, you can check it out. You can look for Dr. Mark Testa on LinkedIn or Twitter. And gosh, yeah. thanks so much. Thanks so much, Kimberly. I appreciate the opportunity to share this with uh, your people. Absolutely. <laughs>